What's going on, everybody? 360 Digital Closing Bell here. We are live on YouTube from an undisclosed location here in Denver, Colorado. I am your humble correspondent, Michael Tanner, joined as always by the executive producer of the show, the purveyor of the show, the director and publisher of the world's greatest website, Oil and Gas 360.com, Stuart Turley. Stu, how are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and I'm in Denver. You are in Denver. We are really close. Unfortunately, we've got some wild things going on with our technology, so we're still in separate places. But we have a new look. We have a new set. We are showing off. We're probably going to be testing a couple different one of these. So let us know what you think. M Tanner Entercom Inc. dot com. Guys, we have a great show for you lined up. Oasis, are they going to make an interest payment today? BP on the international side has their entire green week. Stu's going to cover all of that. There's also a biofuels mandate that was denied by the EPA, which we'll cover. Also, we'll cover the equities market. Stu's probably about to get on TikTok now. But before we get that, guys, just subscribe. 360 Digital Close. But iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, the best way to stay up to date on all of your energy market news. Overall equities markets today, guys, you know, you know, a new week, new optimism. All indices up about one and a half percentage points. Um, SPY, 1.25 percentage points. NASDAQ, 1.92 percentage points. Um, Dow Jones is up 1.8 percentage points. Tech stocks did really good off the back of a couple things. One, Indivia, $40 billion for or um um, I don't know what the name of the company was, but it was they bought it from SoftBank. So Indivia buying away a very large chip maker, forty billion dollars. Also, Stu, Oracle buys TikTok. As you know, there was a lot of different. Uh, Microsoft was in the bidding. Walmart got in on it on the side. Finally, Oracle does it, and I love it, Stu. The most, the most old school, legacy, unsecured software in America buys TikTok. Are you getting on now? I wouldn't. I'm still not going to go on TikTok. <laughs> Oh, come on, Stu. We need to get you on TikTok. I think you could have some quality content. But that's really what, what rose a lot of this stuff up. Crude oil st- stayed fairly flat, excuse me, 37.30. Natural gas um, was about a 1.81% rise off some really nice um, t- uh, cooling temperatures, which is good. 12-month strip for uh, crude oil stayed flat, 41.14. And on the natural gas side, 12-month strip, $3.13. Since that, again, stayed fairly flat. XOP, which is our EMP securities contract, $1.8 or or excuse me, uh, 45, uh, 43, which is a 1.84 percent increase. So good all around for energy equities. OIH, which are oil field services, 112.24. That's a uh, about a half percent increase, uh, about 68 cents. On the downside, though, Mexico Energy Corp, $3.70. That's about five and a half percentage points on the downside. Northern Oil and Gas, obviously, these 66 acres in the Permian aren't quite doing it for them, down five and a half percentage points. The 55 cents, Par Pacific Holdings Company, um, $7.50 uh, 50 cents for the biggest loser on the day at $6, or excuse me, 6.37 percentage points. On the upside, great numbers, guys. Barry Petroleum Corporation, um, spinoff of CRC, kind of buying some older assets from there. Um, they're up $3.82. That's 13.5 percentage points. Amplify Energy Corporation, $0.96. Cents, that's 15 percentage points. Next Decade Corporation, $2.97. Up 46 percentage points. Holy smokes, Stu. What do we have on the international news desk today? You know, we've got a bunch, Michael, and uh, thanks. Uh, we've got BP. We're really watching them, uh, a, almost an MBA study of BP morphing, and they have put out a new notice that they are going to carbon uh, emissions, and they're dropping their oil productions by 40%, Michael, mm-hmm. and low and low carbon uh, investments jumping tenfold by 2030. This is just phenomenal of a um, one of the oil majors uh, totally revamping themselves. And uh, one of the quotes in the article is, all three scenarios show mm-hmm. that oil and gas will be interesting ch- challenge as society shifts away from its reliance on fossil fuels. Renewable energy by wind, solar, and power, it's the fastest growing source over the next 30 years. I, uh, I am stunned by how fast they are changing and the level of what they're trying to do to go to net zero. Um, you and I had talked about Chevron as well as Shell. Shell is also doing this as well too. The price in a low price energy market uh, versus a high price market, uh, Exxon and BP are less profitable than Chevron across the whole uh, thing. And they've got more going into uh, uh, renewable energies. Chevron has the least amount. 
this is going to be interesting to watch as we uh, roll forward in this next few days and then rolling this yeah, out. Yeah, we covered this a lot heavily on our Week Ahead podcast, which you can check out on the 360 Digital Closing Bell podcast feed and the Oil & Gas Show podcast feed. For the first time ever today, you will be able to hear this show on the 360 Digital Closing Bell feed. We are excited that. I know you have one other thing on the uh, um, international side. Uh, you bet. Colombian Oil Company, uh, Ectro, Ectro, Echo Pet. Patrol. Echo Patrol. Echo Patrol. Thank you very much. They are now saying they're going to build 100. They're going to drill 100 wells in the Permian. Here is a South American country, country uh, company coming in and drilling 100 wells in the Permian. Rock on. I'm, I'm happy about this one. Let's take a look at it and follow this story. This is cool. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what rock they get. That was really cool. You also sent me this article this morning that all all I had to do was read the title, and I wanted to slam my head into an ice pick. U.S. regulators split with EU, UK over ESG investing. Just yeah. slam my head into an ice pick. That sounds like a story I want to avoid at all costs. It, it's on the news desk, and that one's going to go for our long podcast. I have some more things going on. Oh, great. Now uh, we're going to talk about it on our long podcast. We're not going to talk about it here. I want to see you slam your head against the pavement. Uh, it, it's about time. I've been messing with you too much. On the U.S. shale side, there's a couple different things. First, um, you know, I'd be remiss if we didn't continue to talk politics. We get closer to November. Unfortunately, we're going to have to talk about it. I think the biggest thing um, that, that I'm watching for as politics come in closer is how a lot of this Trump administration um, deals with uh, – a lot of the different um, activisms that's going around happening. And right now, the biofuels industry is is one that has sort of garnered a lot of attention. As you know, um, ethanol became a huge thing underneath President uh, uh, George W. Bush back in the early 2000s as really a way to help prop up the farmers industry, mandating the fact that so much of, of – you know, so much of your of our gasoline had to come from ethanol, which is supported by corn. Well, over the past, you know, in the Trump administration, they have been waiving a lot of those biofuel mandates for really smaller operators. But today, off the off the back of the farmers union creeping down his throat, the EPA and uh, has come out and 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 mandate and denied waivers for 18 small uh, oil and gas operators who wanted to waive the biofuel mandates in an apparent attempt to kind of curry more favor with the farmers industry. I mean, they you want to talk about someone who's been hit hard by COVID. They have been hit very hard, Stu. And I know you're not necessarily a ethanol fan, but let's see if we can keep it brief. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the ethanol has not been a very good thing for uh, the farmers in, in a lot of the pricing way. It's not good for your cars. People say, oh, it doesn't hurt. It is not good for the average consumer. Uh, it has uh, cost miles per gallon. It has not been good for the environment. Uh, just a general not good for everybody. Um, I'd like to see this uh, either exited properly so it does not hurt the farmers. God bless our farmers. God bless our oil folks. The mixing the two does not seem to be uh, good for everybody. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever you're robbing Peter to pay Paul never really makes sense. Eventually, you run out of money in the thing. I think the other thing that we need to cover is Oasis Petroleum. Um, they're kind of on our dead man walking list or what we would call our uh, uh, Captain Jack Sparrow list, I think is what we'll call them. Um, tomorrow, they have a $30 million interest payment due. And if you go back to Jan end January 30th. They had $77 million of cash on hand. And to give you an idea, they spent about $99 million in uh, – G or excuse me. They have $37 million in quarterly G&A. So they basically got a double G&A payment due. I'm, I'm not sure – if they'll make it, we'll see. We'll be watching and covering this tomorrow. Um, as you know, if they don't make this, they will enter that 30-day forbearance period. We are still waiting for Lone Star. I don't know how. we we, we'll, we got to hear something on Lone Star today as well. Tomorrow's the official date. We will see, though, what happens. Oasis is about to enter into that category. Um, you know, Otherwise, it'd be really a, a big day on the tech side. I don't know if energy equities had that big. Um, I think we're looking to, 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 to crude oil – uh, uh, to the crude oil um, – Inventory updates that come on Wednesday for a little more clarity on what's happening on oil price. Currently 37.30. But we miss anything today, Stu? I don't think so. We got a lot coming up in the rest of the week, though. 
We do have a lot to cover, guys. And with that, we're going to go ahead and let you get out of here. Finish up your day. Thank you for checking out the 360 Digital Closing Bell on the world's greatest website, oilandgas360.com. I'm Michael Tanner. He's Stuart Torlin. We will see you guys tomorrow for the Digital 